Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. And this tutorial is a request. After doing a bunch of uh, visual effects tutorials, people are asking for more. So here we are. I'm going to show you a little bit more about particles. This time we're going to talk about blobbies. So to start off, let's make sure that we're going to do uh, FX. And let's go to End Particles. And let's go ahead and say Create Emitter. And we're going to get an emitter. And then we're also going to get End Particles. When I'm going to rewind, I'm going to give myself a little bit more time and press play. And you're going to see that we have a bunch of particles raining down. N, which is the nucleus, which you can also find in the outliner, is basically where you can find the gravity and as well as the gravity direction. So for example, if I go to the gravity direction and change it to a positive one, now rewind and play, the particles are actually going to start rising up. But this is supposed to be reality, so we're going to go ahead and do a negative one. There's a lot of things we can do with particles, and I see, and you know, I can spend all day talking about it. But what I wanted to show you guys is how to fill up a uh, a container with particles and then change them into blobbies. So I'm going to create a container. Let's go ahead and just create a cylinder. I'm going to go to the channel box, go to the inputs here, and make the subdivision cap to zero. Then I am going to go to faces, to select the top face and delete. With that, I'm going to double click on the edges. Control E. Going to push this in a little bit. Control E again. And this time I'm going to click on this little trigger, which is taking me to world space. Bring it down. Maybe a little further down. And then I am going to go to my modeling or just hold down spacebar. We're going to go to mesh, fill hole. And now it is closed. Now you could have selected faces and done all this stuff, but um, this will work. So now what we want is for our emitter and the particles to actually intersect with this geometry to just go ahead and start uh, interacting with it. So, okay, so what we have is our emitter, which I'm going to bring up a little bit. And of course, when I press play, all the particles are going through. So what we're going to do is select this object in object mode. Then I am going to go to end cloth and create a passive collider. I know it's a little weird that I go through end cloth, but it works. I'm going to rewind, press play, and now you can see that the particles are actually filling in. Right? So there's, they're just kind of continuing on and it's going to keep going for a little while. Okay, I'm going to rewind again and let's go to our emitter and let's open up the attributes. And right now we are going to mess around with this. Right now we have about 100 particles uh, per second, so I can increase that. And if I press play, you're going to see that I'm going to get a lot more particles. I can also tell it to mess around with the min and max, which means uh, how far do you want the particles to actually you know, explode from the center. So you can see that I can actually control the particle um, and you can see all the particles bouncing around. It's kind of funny. Um, and of course I can use this, the min distance, which means like how far do you want the particles to actually, do you want them to start from the center or do you want them to be far away? So notice that now it's, we really can't see where the particles are coming from, no longer at the center of the emitter. Now they seem to be coming from this range, which is the range I created. So I'm going to go back to zero because I actually do want them to fill in here. And notice that it's just going to keep filling. And I'm going to decrease my max and now my time's running out. So now it's going to rewind, which gives me a little bit more opportunity to just kind of reduce the length. I'm going to rewind and play again. And now, uh, there we go. It's kind of interesting that it's creating this little sphere. All right. Speed means how fast do you want them to go? Do you want them to maybe rise a little faster? Notice that some of them are starting to bounce off because of the speed. And then you can play with the random speed. And there's a couple of other things you can mess around with. But uh, really what we want to look at is the particle shape. Now, it can be a little overwhelming to see what's going on in all of these things. For example, lifespan. Right now it's a live, live forever, which is what I want. But if you guys wanted to maybe not live forever, then you can actually get it to reduce at a certain range if you wanted to. I actually do want to go to particle size. Right now my particles are small. So if I increase the particle size, you're going to get bigger. Whoa, what was that? Um, this is why you always rewind and play. Some particle just flew out. And then we can kind of play around with the size. 
So notice that with increasing my size, it's having a challenging time. So let's go ahead and just kind of drop it a little bit. I'm going to rewind that. All right, so there's a couple of other things that we want to play around with if you wanted to. Um, I'm really not going to spend too much time with that. What I really wanted to show you, though, the purpose of this is the blobbies. So right now, if I create a Arnold light so we can actually see something, let's create a physical sun. And then if I try to render, and uh, actually, let me just press play a little bit and see the particles. Rewind, play, all right. So Arnold's going to create these little spheres and let's get a little closer here. So we are getting, we can actually, Arnold can read the particles, but it's a little odd. So let's grab those particles again. If we go down to shading, you're going to see that right now we're at points and there's other options we have. One of them is called uh, multi point. So that means that every point now has three. So if I press play, now we have a bunch of them. So if we press play, you can see that now we have a range of particles. I'm going to stop that. We also have this thing called multi-streak. This is how you create sparks. So if we press play, let me rewind and play and see if we can get something out of this. Um, notice that Arnold can't really read it, right? So there's a challenge when it comes to particles is that um, Arnold really can't read some of the particles, but Sometimes if we assign a new material, for example, a shader that it can read, sometimes Arnold will, will be able to read it. And in this case, it really didn't. So um, one of the things that you can do is try to render it using Maya software. So I'm using regular Arnold here. So again, it's this little guy right here, which basically renders. And we have more than just one um, render. We actually have something called Maya software. And if I render Maya software, we're not going to see anything. However, we do have Maya hardware and Maya hardware will create the sparks. So that's something to keep in mind that if you want to render this, we, uh, you probably want to render it uh, using Maya hardware. So now we other, other have cool things like numeric. So it changes everything into a number. Uh, we also have points, which is the default. Really wanted to show you is blobbies. Blobbies are actually controlled by the radius. So right now my radius is really small. Oh, there it goes. If I increase my radius, then I'm going to start getting these spheres. And what's cool about these spheres is that they actually kind of merge together. So now if I rewind and press play, I'm going to get a bunch of blobbies. And it looks like almost like boiling water. So I press the number four, we're going to see that the blobbies are actually kind of piling on each other. All right, so I'm going to put my 0.25 and uh, I'm going to go into here and say self collide. Self collide means that they actually will bounce off of each other. So that's something that I need to uh, take into consideration that they are actually, in fact, hitting each other. And if I render this out, you're going to notice that it does because I applied an Arnold shader to it, the shader is actually working and all of these guys are actually attached. And notice how they're, uh, even though they're, these two are separate spheres, they actually connect, which is what Blobbies is famous for. Go over here to the emitter and maybe change that to 100 and probably decrease my speed because it's a little, these guys are like flying fast. So rewind, press play, and now we're getting a similar uh, interesting effect. So I might need to decrease these a little bit more, 0.1. So hopefully that means that they'll fill up this, the bubble as there, as you can see, starting to fill up and then it starts to pour out, which is a little bit more of the effect that I want. So again, I'm going to render this out just to see. Now it looks like the spheres aren't connected, but notice that this is actually making it all blobby. It's uh, there actually looks like a, almost like a goo, which is a fun effect. Um, let's see what else I wanted to show you guys. Going back to my particle and my particle shape. There is opacity and um, things like that. If you wanted to play with that, I would recommend it. But what I was, um, we also have other things like Q, uh, cloud and tube, which might be for another tutorial. But blobbies are a lot of fun because they create goo. Now, this is another thing I want to show you is that now that we have an Arnold standard surface shader attached to it, I can actually go into presets and say, um, let's see what I want. Let's go to frosted glass and replace. Now I'm going to press play. I'm going to watch this start to boil over. I'm going to stop it right around here and let's render it out. And it's going to start looking like a fluid. So if I press play and Arnold's going to try to keep up, you're going to notice that it's almost like 
oh boy, this is really struggling. There we go. Um, notice that it's starting to look a lot like fluids being poured out of the of the space and it's actually falling out, which is kind of fun. So I'm gonna stop this for now. And let's say that I'm gonna create a plane here in the center. So I have a floor and I'm gonna bring it down here. Can I intersect that a little bit? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make this into a passive collider. I'm gonna rewind and play. I'm gonna watch this boil over. I'm gonna let that kind of pull down here at the bottom. Just making sure that it's nice and full. And then I'm gonna set my camera a little bit better. And let's see what we get. And I'll give that a second to render. Now, the reason why it's taking longer than usual, and my computer is pretty fast, is that, uh, you know, there's a lot going on here. That's a lot of geometry that is being calculated. Not only that, it's connecting a bunch of mesh together in the blobbies. And also there's a lot of things uh, happening in the background. So uh, be patient with this because it will take a while to render, but the effect, but the effect is actually pretty neat. Again, you can change this if you wanted to. So for example, let's say I wanted to, uh, grab this particle and my AI standard surface shader here, go to presets. And let's say I wanted to make this into like gold place. And then it's going to make it look like my object is pouring out liquid gold, which is pretty neat. Now this is how use uh, fluids used to be built. Now they have other things like Bifrost and stuff like that. So, so just keep that in mind that there's other options, but if you wanted to create something really interesting and fun and just kind of make it look a little bit like, um, like jelly almost, this is a really quick way of, of doing so. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. That was kind of like an intro to, uh, particles, emitters, and also, uh, blobbies, which are so much fun. I think they're really interesting. All right. Let me know again. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, please leave a comment below and don't forget that please like and share my tutorials. That's always really wonderful and helpful because um, that encourages me to make more. So again, thank you everybody for your support. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.